everybody, my name's Kirk. Welcome to Connect. I have a question for you. Which do you like better? Scary books? <laughs> or funny books? Which is it? Scary books, funny books. I think I like funny books better. Well, the Connect HQ crew is finding out about the battle between good and evil. And our point reminds us of that. I'm gonna say it. I need you to repeat it after me. Are you ready? Here we go. God wins, evil loses. Fantastic job, that one was short and easy. All right, now we're gonna do worship. You know what the drill is. We're gonna go to Connect HQ right now to learn more. This is my favorite part of Connect, connecting to God through music. Worshiping God is making a big deal out of who he is and all he's done. And I love to connect to God through music. And you know, just dancing around in this body God's given me, like this. Especially here at church with all of my friends. So come on, sing, dance, worship, get up on your feet and let's connect to God together.
with everybody talking, yeah. Couldn't beat him, nothing could hold him down. Our God conquered the grave, so come on now, make it loud. Everybody shout it out, Jesus is alive right now. Sing it out, sing it out, sing it out. Jesus is alive right now. Whoa, sing it out, sing it out, sing it out. Jesus is alive.
one is bigger than no one is stronger than hey no one is greater than Dot? <laughs> Tony, you can't sneak up on me when I'm reading a book like this. <laughs> what you reading? Phantom of the Opera. I haven't read that one. It's about a creepy dude who causes problems at an opera house. Hmm, that sounds spooky. I'm surprised that you like scary books. I don't, but I learned a trick about scary books. If it gets too scary, just do this. Then you're free to think about non-scary things like rainbows. Or seahorses. It's just a little old book. What's so scary about it? It's little. There was a, there was a spider in it, and it. We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. My name is Dot, and this is how I learned about the Invisible War. Why don't we ask Dot? Okay, Vanessa and I are working on this skit, and we're kind of disagreeing about the best way to go about fighting the spiritual war. I say the best tactic is to have a good defense. He says we should take the offense. I think we should be fighting and punching our way to victory. Huh. How do you expect to be physical in a spiritual war? I thought it was clear I was doing spiritual karate. Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down. You keep saying spiritual war? What is that? The Bible says we're in a spiritual war all around us. Right now. Between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of evil. Even here in Connect HQ? Even here. I think we should protect ourselves by laying down some traps. I've got a guy who can help us get our hands on some tanks. Okay, again, this is a spiritual enemy. Regular weapons won't work here. A spiritual enemy? Like a phantom? I wouldn't go that far, but it is like the forces of evil. But we don't have to be afraid. We have everything we need to protect us. We have the armor of God. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. I mean, to your point, the armor of God is more of a defense and less about fighting. <sighs> that is what I've been saying for the last hour. Sorry to waste your time, Doc. We'll let you get back to your book. And I'm gonna be in touch about that tank guy. Great. 
Maurice, you're just in time. I, th I think this computer has a virus. What? Mm -hmm. Well, let me have a look. Uh-oh. It's a fat lady virus. Uh, you mean like that phrase, it's all over when the fat lady sings? Yep. And when you get this virus, it's all over. Your computer is donezo. Show's over, folks. Everyone go home. Uh, can it be fixed? I can update our antivirus software to protect the rest of our system, but this particular computer is toast. Well, if this one's dead, should we worry about the other ones? That's the thing about attacks like these. You can protect all you want, but it's not 100%. Wait, we're, we're vulnerable? Completely. Things can still get through our defenses. If we're not careful, this entire place could be out in a number of hours. Man, then it really would be all over when the fat lady sang. We're unprotected hey. at the Opera House! Did, did you know she was back there? No. That scared the crickets out of me. Mm-hmm. Today, nothing has happened. It's been a good day. It's happening! What is? The Invisible War. We were attacked. How so? I heard Maurice talking about it. He said we're completely vulnerable. I need that armor you were talking about. There's a Bible link about it. Then play it, man! Here, it's in the archives under armor. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God and love others. We're searching God's word for things to discover. Is alive. Timmy, what are you doing? You're supposed to be dressed as a prince. I decided that dressing up in God's armor was way cooler. You're not dressed in God's armor. Yes, I am. Check the facts, right here in the book of Ephesians. The Bible told me to put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in a time of evil. Well, it also says here that you should be wearing the belt of truth because God's truth sets you free from the lies of the enemy. Are you calling my belt a liar? No, but I do think you might be in the wrong outfit. To be honest, I didn't read past the first verse. What else does Ephesians say? Let's see. Ephesians 6.15 says to wear the breastplate of righteousness. Yes, I've got that right here. That's just a normal breastplate. The one you need helps us choose what is right and protects your heart from sin. Mine's no good then. Keep reading. All right. Next up, we have the shoes of the gospel of peace. They help you not to fear or worry about the things going on around you and share God's peace with others. Well, 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 would you look at this? No peace in these kicks. <laughs> it smells like fear in there to me. What about my shield? It has to be right. Can it strengthen you to believe only in God like the shield of faith from Ephesians? Probably. And can it stand up to the lies and bad thoughts the enemy might shoot at it? That depends. Can plastic defend me against evil? I don't think so. Oh man, I'm in big trouble. You might as well tell me the rest. All we have left to check off are the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. The helmet of salvo, what? I said the helmet of salvation. It means this helmet can protect your mind and help you to only think about God. Oh, I get it. So, what about the sword? Is it a super awesome, dangerous sword? Here's your sword. No, silly goose. This is a B-I-B-L-E, Bible. I wanted a sword. Well, the sword of the spirit is actually God's word. When you speak the words of the Bible, it can cut the lies of the enemy like a sword. I don't think I'm gonna have enough allowance money to spend on all these fancy Jesus clothes. 
These aren't physical pieces of armor, Timmy. If you pray, read the Bible, and have Jesus in your heart, you will always be dressed in God's armor. So I'm not fighting in an actual battle? Oh, it's real, all right. But we can't see the spiritual war going on right now. But we can protect our hearts and minds from fear or doubt with the armor of God. Wow. Thanks for all your help. I'm ready for battle now. So you see, the armor of God is our protection, and it gives us power. But what does an attack look like? So God loves us, and the enemy doesn't like that. So he wants to hurt our relationship with God. An evil attack may look like lies about you or lies about God. Wait, that's weird. Something's wrong with the tablet. That's an attack from the enemy! No, I, I don't think it's... I've got to show this to Tony. That's my tablet. Good thing there's always one lying around. Mike has got to clean up after himself. <laughs> Another one bites the dust. It's the Phantom of Connect HQ! I, I think that's a little bit of an overreaction. I never overreact. There is someone or something working behind the scenes to take us out. It's an invisible war. Here, hold this. I've got to get my tank guy on the phone. Wait, 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 wait. Dot, did you say invisible war? Tony, I don't know how to tell you this, but there is a spiritual war going on around us all the time. Yes, I'm aware, but I don't think that's a reason for us to make up stories about phantoms and go around scaring people. I think you've been reading too many scary books. But I'm not making it up. I heard you and Maurice talking about how we were being attacked. Oh, no, no, we're talking about a virus that's going around. A virus? Mm -hmm. It's an invisible chemical attack. Oh, <laughs> Dot, listen to me. Even if it was some sort of spiritual attack, which I'm not sure it is. It could be. Okay, it could be. But God's already won the invisible war. What? When? How? There's no need to worry because the Bible tells us God's already won the war. That's comforting. <laughs> it is. God is the ruler over everything. Evil may try to lie to you, scare you, and steal your joy, but all you gotta remember is, God wins, evil loses. So when we feel attacked... Say it loud. God wins, evil loses. And it seems like everything behind the scenes is working against you. You can call on the power of Jesus and... God wins, evil loses! Feel better? That definitely helps. <laughs> Don't worry about the lies in the dark. Just stay in the light with the armor of God, and you'll be just fine. Oh, that gives me a great idea. Wait, uh, where are you going? To the stage. You just gave me an awesome idea for a skit. Okay. <laughs> Behold, a light shining in the darkness. All around is an invisible world. We can't see. Can we fight it with lasers, tanks, or punching? No, it is a spiritual world. What then will protect us and keep us in the light? How can we thwart the lies we hear around us? Is there any way to combat Evil. There is. We have the armor. The armor! Bring forth the armor! It is written in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 13. So say we all. Ephesians 6, 13. Ephesians 6, 13. Put on every piece of God's armor. Put on every piece of God's armor. So you will be able to resist. So, so you, you will, will be, be able, able to resist. resist the enemy in the time of evil. The, the enemy, enemy in the time of evil. So when evil lies to you, put on the belts of truth. And when evil gives us stress, fear, or worry, put on the shoes of peace. Wear every bit, and the armor of God will protect us. But what if it feels like the darkness is closing in? Or what if we fear the light may go out? Remember, we already know the ending. 
The invisible war is already won. Say it loud. God wins, evil loses. There, I just updated our antivirus software. We shouldn't hear any more opera. Ah! You forgot we have Doc. I have just returned from the theater where the skit Vision Group and I made a skit about how God wins. Well, I can't wait to see it. I'm going. <coughs> <coughs> I'm going to make a connection transmission for our archives. Well, you should be good to go. Systems online and good as gravy. Thanks for protecting us from viruses. Just like when we wear the armor of God, I feel safe. See, I told you there was nothing to worry about. Whoa, hey, man! Whoa, man! <laughs> Hi, my name is Dot, and I'm part of Connect HQ. We found this answer for you. The Bible tells us this in the book of Ephesians. Say it with me like this. Ephesians 6.13 Put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. In the spiritual war going on around us, we have protection. Wearing the armor of God gives us power. When you wear the armor of God, you can stand firm against the lies of your enemy. Put on the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, and the shoes of God's peace. Carry the shield of faith, wear the helmet of salvation, and don't forget the sword of the Spirit is God's Bible. When you speak the words from God's Bible, it's like cutting the enemy with a sharp, double-edged sword. We don't know everything about it, but the Bible does tell us there is a real spiritual war going on right now between God's kingdom and the kingdom of evil. Normal weapons like tanks and traps don't work against a spiritual enemy, but we don't have to panic. We know that God has already won the war, when you trust and follow Jesus, you're powerful because you're fighting on God's side. If you feel attacked, call on the powerful name of Jesus and it will remind you that God wins, evil loses. Put on your armor and stand firm in the light. God is in control of this invisible world around us. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. Being in the spotlight was fun. This is creepy. Opera is there, but he is really creepy. Next stop, Broadway! All around us is an invisible war, but when you trust and follow Jesus, that gives you the power to know you're on God's side. If you've never made the decision to trust and follow Jesus, you can start today. All you have to remember are the ABCs. A, admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying him. B, believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you are forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C, choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is your leader and number one friend. If you wanna make that choice today, be sure to talk about it with your Connect Small Group leader before you leave. That is the most important decision that you can make. If you want to know more about that, I want you to talk to a trusted adult before we finish today. All right, we have a verse that we need to say together. Here we go. Ephesians 6.13. Put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Ah, great job. God already won the war against evil but we still need protection. That's why he gave us his armor. So we're gonna draw some different parts of God's armor together. I want you to go get a piece of paper and something to draw with. I'm gonna get set up here. Here we go. All right. Do you have your piece of paper and something to draw with? Fantastic. Well, here's my paper. Obviously it's big, but yours doesn't have to be this big. It's whatever size you have that'll work. I just want you to be able to see what I'm drawing, okay? Here we go. So first, we have to draw a person to put our armor on. So do that right now. Go ahead and draw your person. Mine's just gonna be a stick figure. It doesn't have to be fancy. Stick figure's okay. If you wanna do something a little more elaborate, go for it. It's all right, it's all good. Got our legs. Got our stick man, arms. 
good. He's got to have a face. We can't forget a face. So. Some eyes. And a big smiley mouth. There, we have our person. Do you have your person? Okay, great. So the first thing that we're going to draw is the belt of truth. You're gonna draw it right down here around his waist. So go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna make mine kind of big so we can see it. Put it across here, all the way up there. Give him a little belt buckle action. Cause that's how he would do his belt. So we have our belt of truth. So some things the belt of truth helps you with are telling the truth, believing the truth in the Bible, and believing God's truth about yourself. Great job. All right, now next is the breastplate of righteousness. And it goes right here on his chest. So you're kind of kind of draw it like a t-shirt. We're just gonna do it just like this. Go ahead and draw your breastplate of righteousness. It's all right if yours looks different than mine. Good, that's a pretty good breastplate. You might even add some stripes just to make it kind of like shiny metal. Add whatever you want to yours. All right, so this is our breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness can help you know the right choice to make and protect your heart, your heart's right in this area behind the breastplate, from sin. Next, we're gonna have the shoes of God's peace. And those are obviously gonna go on his feet. So we're gonna put some shoes. Maybe yours look like boots. That's kind of what mine are gonna look like. There's one shoe boot thing. Go ahead and draw yours. All right. He has his peace boots or his peace shoes. These can help you when you're stressed out. They can help you bring peace to people around you and can protect you from fear and worry. It's God's peace. So next we have the shield of faith. You're gonna draw that right here in one of his hands. Just pick a hand, whichever one, and you're gonna draw your shield. So mine's gonna be kind of spiky like this. And it's gonna go down and loop like this. And I'm gonna put some fancy cross marks on it like that. There we go, there's our shield. So the shield can help you when you don't believe God loves you or you're not sure God is real. It strengthens you to have faith in God only. Great job, you guys are doing fantastic. All right, now the next thing is the helmet of salvation. We're gonna put it, of course, right on his head. So go ahead and draw your helmet. Uh, mine's gonna be a little bit tricky. We're gonna go, I might even go up here a little bit. Boop, 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 boop. Sort of looks like a, a beanie, <laughs> but it works. Whatever yours is, mine's kind of a helmet beanie thing. I would put a little strap. Maybe that'll make it feel a little bit more like a helmet. There we go. We'll add a little strap to it. There we go. There's a strap. So the helmet of salvation can change your mind to think more loving, kind, and godly thoughts. It helps you to remember Jesus saved you and forgave you. It also protects your mind when you're tempted to think ugly, rude, or unkind thoughts. Next is the sword of the spirit. And we're gonna put a sword in the other hand that's not holding the shield. So go ahead and put that. Have our sword handle right here. Oops. I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger edge. And then we're gonna go up and make the big point of the sword, just like that. Boom, oh man, that's a pretty that's a pretty great sword. What does yours look like? Is it, you got your sword done? Fantastic, all right. So it's actually, this represents your Bible. It's the word of God. You can read it to help your friendship with God grow, learn to live God's way, and fight against evil lies. You guys did a fantastic job. Here's my Guy, do you have all of your armor? I know your armor looks fantastic. So now that you know about the armor of God, you can show this picture to your family. Maybe you do a video call with a grandparent or a friend and show it to them and talk to them about the armor of God. Teach them all the different pieces about it. We've got some discussion questions that we're gonna put on the screen for you and your family to talk about. Thank you so much for joining me in Connect today, and I will see you later. 
else can I add? Well, he probably needs a nose. Maybe I'll add a 